Welcome to Enjoy the Pig. I'm Pat Randolph. This is our first installment in six years of Enjoy the Pig. Uh, Enjoy the Pig is a barbecue restaurant YouTube review YouTube channel, uh, which I started in Nashville about six years ago. I have since moved back to Kansas City and uh, am now uh, uh, kind of re- Starting the channel, and uh, the reason for it is I see that there is a crisis emerging uh, in Kansas City Barbecue, and I want to talk about it here on the channel uh, and uh, talk about uh, some of the reviews we'll be doing and the reason we're doing some reviews we're doing uh, and uh, and the differences and styles of barbecue, types of barbecue, and the barbecue I would recommend kind of in general, and then we'll get into restaurant specifics and the restaurant reviews. Um, uh, my site is sponsored by, uh, Uber. If you want to become an Uber driver, please put this code in, uh, you'll receive money and I'll receive money, which will help, uh, further my efforts to, uh, conduct national reviews of, uh, barbecue restaurants, um, nationwide. Uh, so if you, uh, want to sign up for Uber as a driver, or you know somebody who does, please give them this code and they'll get paid money and, uh, so will enjoy the pig. Uh, let's start out today with a discussion about Kansas City Barbecue. Kansas City Barbecue uh, is known nationwide as probably the best barbecue. And the reason is because of uh, a single restaurant which became very popular uh, with, uh, with a broad audience uh, thanks to the Kansas City A's and the Kansas City Municipal Stadium back in the late 60s. That restaurant was called Arthur Bryant's. Uh, it was it's located at 12th and Brooklyn near the historic 17th and Vine Black neighborhood, uh, where Charlie Parker and many others emerged as great jazz sensations uh, back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Uh, in the uh, 60s, the neighborhood had run into uh, a great deal of disrepair and, uh, and had become kind of, uh, kind of a dangerous place to be. But the Kansas City Municipal Stadium still existed, and that's where the Royals played their first few seasons, and the Kansas City Ace played from the mid-50s until, I believe, 1969. Uh, Arthur Bryant's restaurant uh, was located just blocks from there. And what people would do is they'd take the streetcar down to Arthur Bryant's or the bus or whatever, and they would stop and get barbecue, and they would take that barbecue with them to the stadium. Uh, tailgating is not only a Kansas City tradition, but uh, barbecue, because Kansas City barbecue originally was prepared in a pit, not something you could tailgate. Uh, so you can't bring a pit with you to the stadium. So uh, it's even to this day, you can go to a Royals baseball game and bring your own barbecue, uh, and bring it right in the stadium. As long as you don't have any alcoholic drinks, just bring it right in. They don't care, uh, which is, I think, unique in national in, uh, in Major League Baseball. I don't know anywhere else where you're allowed to bring in your own food, uh, but um, that's true here in Kansas City. Uh, in fact, up until recently, you could even bring your own food to movie theaters. I think that's changed, but um, uh, it's always been a Missouri tradition or Kansas City tradition where uh, – uh, yeah, that uh, you got to support your restaurants, you bring your food with you to your venue. Um, now, uh, having said that, uh, uh, Arthur Bryant's barbecue is famous for several reasons. Uh, Arthur Bryant, the purveyor of the establishment, uh, ran a very tight ship, uh, had a very good pit master, the person in charge of the barbecue pit, which was jealously guarded by the pit master. People didn't mess with it. Uh, the, in a barbecue pit, which is a traditional... Uh, Kansas City style barbecue, which emerged from Delta Q uh, down south in black areas, uh, is cooked in a pit with uh, many meats together at a very low temperature, which uh, will thoroughly cook the meat. Uh, the meat is then um, uh, uh, prepared with the other meats uh, and uh, pulled out of the pit just when it's ready to be eaten. You do not, uh, you know, the, the you're going to have the uh, the brisket sandwich that you eat at uh, Arthur Bryant's. going to be a pork brisket. Uh, and uh, they don't slice it. Uh, they don't take those briskets out of the pit until it's time to slice them on the slicer. So you're getting meat that's been cooked for uh, usually a day and as fresh as it can possibly be. Um, the sides uh, that are used in uh, these traditional black barbecue restaurants, uh, like Arthur Bryant's, are going to use uh, the elements of barbecue that aren't used. So uh, burnt ends, which is uh, actually serving those as part of a meal, is a white tradition. In black barbecue, uh, those ribs are cooked so thoroughly that those burnt ends are really, really burnt. In fact, at Arthur Bryant's, back until I think the late 80s, uh, they actually uh, just put the burnt ends out in the food line and you would just pick at them while you were waiting for your food, uh, along with loaves and loaves of white bread. You put half a loaf of white bread on with your food, which is pretty common 
to put a whole lot of bread on with your food in in uh, in black circles. So uh, uh, you'd have your you'd have your your uh, white bread, you'd have your hamburger dill style pickles, you'd have your very well cooked meat, which is a very firm meat, um, with some very spicy sauce, which your handful of dill pickles is going to cut the acid in and make it a very pleasurable dining experience. The sauce is uh, cured in the window of the store in a glass bottle with no preservatives. And again, it is served as fresh as possible on that meat. So you really have a dining experience that is a unique kind of soul food dining experience, but is a very, uh, is a high-end dining experience. Even though it's in kind of a restaurant in the hood, uh, prepared in a pit with other meats and the juices and other meats and the smokes from other meats, uh, and you're eating it at a table where there's no table service and a roll of paper towels on the table and uh, and sauce, and that's it. Uh, you're having a very high-end culinary experience when you eat at a black barbecue restaurant. Uh, and uh, that's what Arthur Bryant's was. And uh, the only reason why, in my opinion, Arthur Bryant's emerged as the best, even though they have terrific food, don't get me wrong, was because of where they're located. You know, the, uh, a lot of white people came from the suburbs to watch the baseball games. And when they watched the baseball games, they got their Bryants on the way. And that was their first experience with kind of this soulful uh, Delta-style barbecue, which Kansas City has become so well known for uh, over the years. Uh, another, The other major player in that was Ollie Gates and Gates Barbecue Restaurants, of which there are several in Kansas City, also use additional pit smoking method. Uh, you're going to put your, the burn ends are used to the beans. Uh, the beans at Gates are the best in the nation. I would put anybody's beans up against them. Uh, and, uh, and you're going to get either slab of ribs with no sides, uh, and that's your meal. That's usually the way ribs are supposed to be served, by the way, not a couple bones on a plate with, a, with some chicken and beef and a bunch of bread and three sides. That's not, the way you're, that's not the way ribs are eaten, at least traditionally in Kansas City. You buy a slab, and you and a friend will eat the slab, just a slab, with a, hand, with a whole bunch of dill pickles and a whole bunch of white bread. Uh, and then you might marry that with nice pills and beer. That's the way that, uh, that you would usually eat ribs. But um, that's all changed recently. And that's changed thanks to two things. A, the traditional segre uh, segregation in Kansas City, which is along state lines. A lot of people don't know this. Kansas City is actually in Missouri. It's not in Kansas, but right along, but it is right along the state line. And uh, when you, uh, uh, Kansas, the state line, unlike any other city in America, of which I'm aware, runs right down the middle of the city. So you walk across the street and you're in Kansas or Missouri and that's the way it's always been. And that was no problem up until Brown versus Board of Education and school desegregation began. Uh, when that happened, uh, you had all the, all the white people moving over to the suburbs and one suburb in one county in Kansas um, where eventually the ranks of that county grew, grew to over 700,000 people. And that's Johnson County, Kansas. Uh, and, uh, and as a result of that, uh, uh, you had a lot fewer people going into the black neighborhoods. Also, of course, the stadium moved from downtown, from near downtown Kansas City out to the eastern suburbs. Um, and uh, so uh, now uh, we don't have, you know, there's no real reason why you have to go by Bryant's to go watch a ball game. So uh, a, a whole new level of barbecue emerged, which is white barbecue. Uh, the original white barbecue was built near the auto factories in Kansas City, Kansas, which is Rosedale's and Quicks. Quicks is now dearly departed, unfortunately. But Rosedale's and Quicks, uh, Quicks uh, Rosedale's been around for 75 years. Uh, and uh, it was just a little tiny shack on a, a place called Southwest Boulevard. They've now expanded a much larger facility. Um, and they smoked their meat in smokers behind a restaurant, uh, which would be the way that you might see barbecue prepared at a barbecue competition. It was fatty. It was juicy. The ribs fell off the bone. The brisket melted in your mouth. And uh, the sides were weak. The white barbecue traditionally has fairly weak sides. Beans are mushy. Uh, they aren't, you know, you can't put your fork in them and have it stand up. That's the way beans should be. But I think that, uh, that the baked beans and white circles are more like Vandekamp's, you know. And then you have, uh, they're always served with two or three sides one of which usually slaw, beans, and fries. Um, and uh, that's how that, that style of barbecue is served. That style of barbecue, uh, was, I think it, it originally got, came from Oklahoma and northern Texas. Uh, it's very popular in Iowa and Nebraska. Uh, places where a lot of white people live, a lot of farmers live, 
Um, it's not popular amongst black people. Uh, I think primarily because the meat cooked at a higher temperature for a shorter period of time. It's not cooked as thoroughly. There's a lot more fat on it. And uh, it is juicier and more tender, I suppose. But it's not, uh, it's not really Kansas City barbecue. Uh, and now, unfortunately, thanks to the American Royal Barbecue, Kansas City barbecue has been redefined as that, white barbecue. Um, and uh, so when you come to Kansas City uh, and you're looking for barbecue... Uh, and you're looking for the famous barbecue that Kansas City is known for, uh, you really need to go to Bryant's, Gates, or a place called LC's. Uh, barbecue, these barbecue restaurants are good, and they're definitely worth going to, but the three restaurants I'm about to mention, Oklahoma Joe's, now Kansas City Joe's, Jack Stack, Fiorello's Jack Stack Restaurant, and the Q39 Barbecue are all three white barbecue restaurants in the American Royal Barbecue Competition tradition, which is not really Kansas City barbecue. So uh, just bear in mind uh, those things. So we're going to review a whole bunch of uh, restaurants today, uh, including Rosedale's and Gates. Uh, I've got a little neighborhood restaurant called uh, The Stack I'm going to review today. Uh, really good up and coming kind of crossover restaurant, little, little black, little white, kind of in between. And uh, then we, uh, well, uh, and we're going to talk um, a little more about, about uh, Gates, I think, in another separate review uh, because in my opinion, Gates represents the gold standard of the way barbecue should be uh, nationwide. They are a fantastic restaurant with fantastic management, and they deserve as much praise as I can, I can hoist upon them. So uh, I hope you enjoy these videos. Uh, again, support uh, Enjoy the Pig by uh, giving this code, which should be on the screen now, to uh, anybody interested in driving for Uber. Uh, they will get a bonus for putting the code in when they sign up and enjoy the pig. We'll, uh, we'll receive money to uh, continue reviewing restaurants. You know, eating barbecue out all the time is expensive. And uh, so we, uh, we, need, we need your support. So please support us by doing uh, using this Uber code when you sign up for Uber. Uh, thanks for watching. Enjoy the pig. And uh, we hope to see you soon.